again. I hope that you've been watching the videos and you've been getting some good benefit from them. Today I would like to talk about an exercise uh, that strengthens the adductors. That's your inner thighs here. And those are really, really important. I think that the where your adductors connect into your pelvis up in the groin, the top of those muscles right there, I think of them as part of the core. They are so, so important for pelvic stability and strength uh, and power. And uh, taking some of the work out of the low back, putting it where it belongs, not where it doesn't belong. There are a couple of tools that you can use. In Pilates, we have this thing. I first learned of it uh, by the name of Magic Circle. It's called a Pilates ring or anything like that now. Uh, if you have one of these and you've been using this, this is great. But for a lot of people, this is a little bit too much. Uh, you, because, kind of like, um, what was it, Suzanne Summers that had the thigh master, you put this between your knees like that, and sorry for about this angle, but for some people, starting out wide like this is just a little too much in the hip area. So, I also like to use something like this. This is just a Nerf sort of volleyball or soccer ball. I got it, oh, I don't remember if I got it at a drugstore or someplace like Toys R Us, but it was no more than about $5, and it works really well. So this goes between your knees. I'm going to show you my preferred way of doing it. It's going to be a little bit challenging to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to talk to you while I'm doing it. Um, but then I'll sit up and I'll show you how you can also do it seated. So you lie down on your back. I like to, if we're using a ball this size, you can put this, your feet together, touching flat on the table, and then put the ball between your knees. Now what I like to do is to take a breath in, start exhaling, start flattening my stomach, and then begin using my inner thighs and press in on the ball while I count to usually about five at first. What I don't mean is Squeeze and hold. What I do mean, you press a little on one, more on two, more on three, more on four, more on five. And then you give yourself about a count or two to release your legs. So nothing is jerky. Everything is smooth in and out. We want to isolate the upper inner thighs. Those are the muscles we're targeting. We do not want to over-engage the hip flexors which looks like this, so you're lifting your tailbone up and pooching your tummy out. I'm always talking about that, the back side of your tailbone, that band across your low, low, low back. Feel it being heavy here. Let it give in to gravity. One other trick, take your hands, take the outside of your little finger, putting that against the top of your leg where it attaches into your hip. So now you're laying your palms and your fingers on top of your hip bones. Let them rest sort of gently but heavily there. And you're going to use the outside of your little finger to gently press down into the top of your leg. That'll do two things. If you do tighten your hip flexors and therefore tilt your pelvis, you're gonna feel it with your hands. You'll feel the movement, you'll feel the tightening of the muscle under your fingers. That gives you some information. The pressing of your little finger and hand into the top of your leg helps you not do that. Helps remind you to keep your pelvis long, neutral, and settled into the surface you're lying on. So I'm going to do one, counting it out, and then I'm going to stop for a moment. Inhale. Exhale, flatten your tummy back and across, and press. Two, three, four, five. Inhale, release. That's about the timing of it. Let's do one more, counting to five. Two, three, four, five. 
Inhale. Exhale, flatten your tummy back and across and press two, three, four, five. Inhale and release. Did you see that? Did you feel that? Let's do three more in a row together. Inhale, exhale, flatten your tummy back and across and press two, three, four, five. Inhale, release. Exhale, flatten your tummy back and across and press two, three, four, five. Inhale, release. Last time, exhale, flatten your tummy back and across and press two, three, four, five. Inhale, release. Now, if you find that that gets to be a little bit too easy and you're not feeling enough, you can do one of two things. My first suggestion would be to add two or three or four or five more repetitions, counting to five in each repetition. What's going on with my hair, y'all? Or, if that becomes a little too easy, then you can start counting a little bit longer in each repetition. I would jump from five to seven counts. I wouldn't jump from five to 10. The reason I guard against that is because when you start doing this uh, for longer and longer and longer periods of time during each repetition, the likelihood that you are going to start engaging your hip flexors and tensing and tilting your pelvis, it increases and it's more and more likely. And you do not want to do that. You want to isolate your inner thighs. You don't want to use your hip flexors. You do want to use your abdominals. So just like with each count, you're pressing in on that ball a little more and a little more. With your abs, with each count, flatten them a little more, a little more, a little more. Let me show you how you can do this seated. Uh, I would put your feet on a surface I would have your back up against some sort of support because what you want to guard against here is sort of giving in in your torso as you're working your inner thighs. So you're going to keep your torso long, remember that magnet, pulling the crown of your head up, the shoulder blades sliding down in the V, the sternum pointing to the pubic bone, the pubic bone pulling up to the sternum, the ribs closing. So you're going to take a breath in. And exhale and press two, three, four, five. Inhale, release. Did you see? I didn't give in. One last time. Inhale, you can even lengthen as you're pulling up on the inhale. Exhale, belly button back and across and press two, three, four, five. And release. The final thing that I would like to say, if you feel pain or pinching in your low back as you do this, stop. Readjust. More than likely, what you have done is engaged your hip flexors and you've either tilted your pelvis or the engaging of your hip flexors has caused you to also grip and tighten in your low back. Stop for a moment. Go back, just lie on your back with your knees bent. Get back into your breathing. Settle into your low back, allow it to give into gravity, allow your hip flexors to relax, and then try it again. I just thought of one other thing. The final thing, play around with how close or how far away from your tush you place your feet, because that's going to make a difference in the positioning of your pelvis. For most people, but not everyone, it's a little bit less than the length of shoulder to hip, that a little bit less between heels and hips than shoulder to hip. Too close, and you're gonna tilt a little bit. Too far away, and you're gonna arch a little bit. Be a Goldilocks. Play around with it until you find that sweet spot. You'll know it when you find it. As always, if you've got any comments, any questions, Please leave them below. I'd love to hear from you.
I love helping you. Thanks. Bye.